I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Steve, are we okay? Oh. Steve, are we okay? Oh. Steve, are we okay? Oh. Steve, are we Do you want to okay? take you? Could you? Can you take YouTube off? Do you want to take you? you could you? Do you want to just try again? Off? Restart from scratch. Do you want to take you? Could you? Do you want to just try again? Restart from scratch. Um. Do you want to take? I think so. Do you want to just try again? Can you mute? Restart from scratch. We are very much live. Um, do you want to take? I think so. Could you, could do you want to just try again? Can, can you mute? Oh, We're having some scratch. technical difficulties. Oh lord. We are very much live. Um, do you want to take? I think so. Could you, oh, do you want to just try again? Can, can you mute? Oh, We're having some scratch. technical difficulties. <laughs> we are very much live. Um, do you want to take? I think so. Could you, do you want to just try can, again? Can, can you mute? Oh, We're having some scratch. technical difficulties. Do I just go for it now? Um. Do, hold on. Um, uh, ring John. Try and figure it out. Do you want me to call someone? Yeah, the video's not playing, but we're into a loop. So that's live. That's live. We're into a loop. So that's live. That's live. But we're Stop into that. a loop. So that's live. That's live. That's live. It just keeps going over and over again. Why? So that's live. That's live. Uh, I better message before I'm checking. Why? So that's live. So can can we can we not stop and Hi. Good evening. Nothing like a few technical issues, hey? But such is life, and we live on, and we carry on. Hi. Um, well, good evening to the St Mary's 6 Nothing p.m. Like a few technical service. Issues, hey? It's really good to have you with us, with your patience. And we carry on. And, hi. Um, well, maybe you're sitting in your St. living room, it's great that we're beaming into you there. Maybe you're with your family. It's really good to have you with us. Maybe you're on your own, you're on an iPad or a phone. Maybe you're going to catch it later on. Whichever way, I hope you feel really welcome. And thank mm. you for welcome us, to welcome us into your home. I'm Helen Phillips, for those of you who don't know. I'm a member here at St Mary's and have been for 13 years. What we've been looking at mm. is big questions. If you haven't seen any of the previous weeks, James... And a couple of others have been exploring some of the big questions that some of our youth and other people have had. So tonight we're going to be discussing mental health. 
and what the Bible says about mental health. Mm. I'm right. going to... Go oh, just, just got a text saying it's all good now. Oh, good. So we're we're all, right. all good. That's, that's amazing. Thank you, Lord. Um, a little run through of what we're going to do. I'm going to pray. Then James and I are going to do a little bit of a game slash question time. We're going to have our creed, which is something that we can say together, whether you're at home, whether you're here in church. We're going to have lovely Susan Curtis, who's going to open up God's word for us. She's going to do our reading. James is going to explore it, and we're going to have a little bit of a conversation surrounding what the reading's on, and a little bit of a conversation about mental health. Mm. And then Laura is going to be leading us in our prayers as we come to the end of our service. So I'm going to start with a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that you're with us all this evening. Thank you, Lord, that although we can't meet together, which is a massive struggle for some people, that we can still meet virtually in mm -hmm. this way and we can still come together as your church. Mm -hmm. Please, Lord, we ask that you speak to us this evening as we discuss the topic of me mental health Help us to be really sensitive and understanding of the struggles that others may have or have had in the past. Lord, help us so that we can be equipped with tools or resources that can help us as we support others. Help us, Lord, to be confident or give us the confidence, Lord, in sharing our own struggles or feelings, big feelings that we might be having and to ask for help if that's what's needed. And Lord, we just ask for a better understanding of who you are and how you see each of us, different and unique in many ways, but we, Lord, are your creation. Mm. Help us to engage our minds, Lord, and help us to focus on you and your teaching. Amen. Amen. Okay, James, you've got, um, we've got a jar here. And I do. A set of emoji-style feelings cards. Ah. So we've got a different set of questions in each jar and I did wonder if we might have different responses but just to get us mm. thinking about how we feel on certain things do you want to mm. go first James I, I, I'm, I'm happy to um, how do you feel when you have to take the bins out late at night and it's really dark <laughs> this is definitely me definitely my husband Tim's all chilled I think it's his favorite time to get out on his own and take the bins out but for me well, Ooh, scared. scared. Uh, and also probably this. Yeah. If yep. you've smelt our black bin when you've got children oh, in nappies, oh, it's not rank. the best one <laughs> to be taken out. How about you, James? Do you have to take the bins um, out? <laughs> well, sometimes. I did at home when we did it, when I was, sorry, we're back at my parents'. It was much more of a trek because we have like half a mile long driveway because uh -huh. like, we live in the middle of a massive field in the okay. middle of Gloucestershire. So it's not only do you have to take it like to the end of your drive, you have to drive half a mile <laughs> just to put it where the guys can come and pick it up. Is that and, you? Yep. Is that you most fuming. of the time? Absolutely fuming. Okay, next one. How do you feel when you hear somebody saying something mean or unkind about you or somebody else? Um, hmm. Yeah. These two, I think I go with a mixture of kind of sad and angry. Mm -hmm. um, just hurts. Yeah, yeah, it's not nice. No, mm. I get that. Okay, you're next, James. Ooh, let's see if I can get a good one. Uh, how do you feel when you sit and watch a bonfire pit with a cup of hot chocolate? Oh, calm, chilled. I quite mm. like that. See. Ah, oh. just uh, I, th there's not really an emoji for it. Just kind of, yeah. You're not bothered. Not bothered, oh, like James. I, I, like for me, perfect night is a heavy blanket, fire inside. Like, why would you want to go outside? True. Okay. True. Yeah. You get the chill <laughs> sitting inside. I get that. Okay. Next one. Ooh, how do you feel when you don't get your own way? Oh, <laughs> this one definitely. <laughs> All the time, no. Um, it really does depend. Because sometimes when you don't get your own way, it's because something else like really good has happened. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. most of the time, I, I think about probably playing back to playing rugby. 
and like you lose a match but like you have mates or people you've played mm -hmm. county on the other team mm -hmm. and you're like yeah i'm upset i've lost but they were the better team they beat us there's kind of that acceptance but most of the time it's oh, it's just yeah yeah in that situation i, I think i'd just be angry <laughs> <laughs> i don't like losing um Same. you're next oh i am um how do you feel when you spend the day with a really good friend slash somebody you love? Oh, definitely. Definitely this. Topped up is my phrase of late. Mm. Topped up, just had a good chat, mm. had a laugh, um, feel encouraged. It's tricky at the moment that you can't sometimes Ooh, do not that. not sad. Do you feel silly? <laughs> yes, kind of. But, you, you know, like, yep. it's kind of the goofy happiness. You're like... Yep. I'm so happy. Yeah, and you can be yourself. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and get a good one. Oh, okay. All right. How do you feel when someone makes a rude noise? <laughs> a ru rude bodily noise at the dinner table or somewhere else inappropriate? All right, it depends. <laughs> so so this is, this is externally versus internally because I work for a church. Okay. So externally, internally... Yeah. Big time. Oh, it's absolutely the worst. We had a situation <laughs> once when I was at chapel at college where um, a guy who was preaching, leading, made a reference to Kanye West that he changed his name to Yee. Okay. And he was quite, I don't want to say elder, like kind of, he was a dad. Mm -hmm. So kind of, el like Your on the older <laughs> spectrum of dads. <laughs> okay. Like a teenage son kind of mm -hmm. dad, trying to make a teenage reference. Did not pull it off. So I'm sitting there amongst these kind of late 20, early 30 year olds going, oh my gosh, this is the most funny thing ever. Didn't help, looked across, saw someone else kind of look at me and just burst out laughing in the middle of chapel. No, oh. It's horrible. See, I, I feel I'm just that old. Like, yeah. Even as a mum, I thought I'd get better and not find things funny. <laughs> and I just, yeah, silly noises or silly, silly, yeah. silly laughs. Yeah, not good. Should we do one more? One more. Is it me? Yeah. I'm presuming. All right. How do you feel when you lose a netball slash rugby slash sports match? You've somewhat answered that and you were very um, gracious. Oh, it, it depends how you lose. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I presume you've had those games where they like just thrash you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But there are those other games where you're like, should have had that. Should have had it. And there's also those people who say, oh, it's just a game. That. Oh. oh my, yes. <laughs> Those people that say it's just a game. Oh, it's. Yeah. We, again, used to have it at college. We used to play, like, I don't know if you've ever played kind of just social sport, like mm -hmm. get out of the house sport. Mm -hmm. And people say, why? We don't even need to take score. Always need to take a score. Always. Always like, what's the point in playing? Yeah. No, I'm with you. Okay. Because um, we're going to chat a little bit more about feelings, emotions, we're going to talk about a little bit deeper, we're going to talk about mental health a little bit later. Mm. We're going to go on to our creed now. And then just before we do that, it made me, when we're going to look at the words, which is what we can say together, we can say it in church, you can say it at home, if you're happy to say that. That in our house, we have a bit of a saying from when someone's having a bit of a wobbly day. Someone's mm. going to school or work, we say, I'm strong, I'm brave, and I'm kind. And even though you might not be feeling those things, we explore them and say, you're stronger than what you think. Mm. God is behind you. God is with you in his strength we can. You're braver than what you think. We have to, often have to step outside our comfort zone and you mm. can always be kind. But sometimes you need reminding of those things. And I think when I was looking at the words for this creed, sometimes whatever place we're in and however we're feeling there's things about God that don't change. Mm. And I thought it's really important that usually we get to do this together to state what we believe and to state these truths that are unchanging about God. So it's really good. If, you, if you're not yet at the point where you feel you can say these things, they're not what you believe, to really look at them as these are what God is all about. These are words that show who our God is. So we're going mm. to say these words together. Hopefully, if they come up on screen. Great, have you got the words? No. We need to see the words. Is that going to be an issue, Steve? Yeah. All right. Wh which creed is it? Do you know which? Because apparently the words are on the screen, but we don't know the words. 
Yeah, you say them, Steve. You say you them, Steve. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that delay. We're going to say the creed together. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose kingdom is everlasting, whose dominion endures forever. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is faithful in all his promises and loving to all he has made. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who opens his hand and satisfies the needs of all living things. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. Thanks, Steve. What a wonderful creed that is. Mm. We're going to hand over to our lovely Susan Curtis, who did really well, um, filmed herself, sent it in. Techie Susan, we call her now. She's going to be opening up Psalm 13 for us. So we're going to hand over into Susan's living room, I think. This evening's reading is Psalm 13, a psalm of David. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great. Right, brilliant. Great thanks to Susan there. What's going on here, James, in mm. Psalm 13? So, here's the thing. The Bible never specifically mentions the word depression. It talks about anxiety a little bit, but the word depression doesn't regularly come up. So we can kind of be tricked into thinking that the Bible doesn't really speak into depression or mental health issues. But then you read a psalm like Psalm 13, mm -hmm. and it's all about the pain and struggle that David's feeling. Like, oh, the passage seems really familiar for some of us who struggle with mental health, doesn't it? David just going on and on again. And it has that refrain, doesn't it? How long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord? And that can be just so familiar to some of us who really struggle. Like, how long will I have to struggle with these bad thoughts? How long will I have to struggle with my suicidality? How long will I have to struggle with um, really feeling lonely and low and unloved? And this is David's question. How long will this pain continue? And that can be our question too sometimes. And he feel, David feels abandoned by God in this psalm, sorrowful in his heart, and though his enemies are triumphant. So David calls out to God. Verse 3, he cries out, and says, God, I feel like you're not listening to me. Listen to me, please. I'm really, really struggling. Please listen to me. And it goes on and on. David even goes as far to lay out the consequences. He says, God, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to die. That's how awful this situation is in. But then there's this real kind of, for those of you who, who can drive, it's like crunching in from like fifth to first or first up to fifth. Like this weird crunch. And then you get verse five and it goes, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. And it just feels so out of place. David, you've gone on and on for four verses. Two thirds of this psalm is, I'm feeling really awful. And then you crunch into this, but I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing your praise. And you go, David. What, 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 what are you doing? You've just spent four verses being the most depressed person I've ever seen, ever. Yet now you're singing praises. Now you're rejoicing. Now you're trusting. What happened? What, what, what has happened? 
And I think it's kind of what you were saying about this, the, these truths you tell yourself as you leave the door. What were they again? It was... Brave, strong, kind. I'm brave, I'm strong, I'm kind. Even though I don't feel that way, even though I'm not feeling that way in my heart, in my head, I say those things because they help point me to the truth. And that is essentially what's going on with David. Because the four verses, even though it doesn't say so explicitly, it lends you to this feeling that David is feeling really rubbish. So when he's feeling really rubbish and comes to this moment of praise and moment of reflection and moment of trust, he's not doing so because he feels like it. He's just told us he doesn't feel like it. Yet he does so anyway. And it kind of reminds me of when I was being counselled and I was receiving counselling for my mental health struggles. One of the things I, I do a lot is a thing called catastrophizing. Really, really big, weird word. So if you and I went to go and had, had shake hands, we can't at the moment. You and I went to go and shake hands, but it was a really awkward handshake. <laughs> like, re like really A-grade awkward handshake. Mm -hmm. You might walk away from that handshake thinking, that was a really awkward handshake. I might leave that, that handshake thinking, I need to go and kill myself because Helen's going to go and tell everyone that I'm the most awkward person in the world and that means I'm worthless and nothing, so I should just go and kill myself now. That's catastrophizing. Starting out with a really, really insignificant lie and then building it up into this massive anxiety-ridden monster. Yet David has done essentially the same thing. He's gone, all my enemies are out to get me. I'm about to die. Lord, what is going on? But then what does he do? Verse 4, he trusts in the Lord's unfailing love. He trusts, essentially, in truth, something he knows to be objectively true. And that's something I was taught to do. When I'm struggling, when I'm failing in my mental health, I trust in something I know to be objectively true. The Lord's love is unfailing. Mm -hmm. um, that my heart can rejoice in his salvation. That I can sing, sing the Lord's praises. That I can worship him no matter what. And this is the best, one of the best things about the Bible is bad preachers, bad teachers, bad vicars, bad rectors will tell you, because you're a Christian, you shouldn't feel this way. Yet the Bible throws that completely out the window. It says, not only can you feel this way, the heroes of the Bible have felt this way. Mm -hmm. David, Paul, I don't want to get too controversial, but Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane seems like he's having a panic attack. The heroes of the Bible can feel this way. So why aren't we allowed to? In fact, not only are we allowed to, but it's, we, we're given permission to. So it's not sinful to struggle. It's not sinful to be anxious. It's not sinful de to be depressed. But this psalm is better than that because David shows us that it's possible to lift our eyes from ourselves onto something true. Even if it's hard, even if it's painful, the best and first step forward is to lift our eyes and look to Christ, to look to Jesus. And I'm just going to go over this again because it's, like, it's really, really important. It is not sinful, it is not bad, nor wrong, nor even unbiblical to feel low or to feel depressed or to feel anxious. These are realities that the Bible tells us that we may have to struggle with, that we may have to deal with. In fact, we are not promised to be, that these struggles will ever be taken from us. We might have to deal with them for the rest of our lives. But that doesn't mean that we are just allowed to submit to our struggles and wallow in pity and depression and anxiety. No, we're not allowed to give in. The Bible tells us that we're to lift our eyes to something better, something other than ourselves, something that is beyond us. So we don't have to trust in ourselves, but something that is of infinite worth and value that we can lift our eyes to and be that rock of hope. Yeah. Mm. And you, you shared a little bit before with us, James, that are you happy to expand a little bit more? What is mm. your history or your struggles mm. with mental health? So I've had a whole load of kind of struggles with my mental health, dips here and there. Sometimes it can be seasonal even, like when it snows... I've discovered since I turned about 19, 20, when it snows, for some reason, I get really depressed. Um, but I would say in my life, I've had two real major struggles. One when I was 14 and one when I was 22. Um, and when I was 14, uh, so I, I, I've never been kind of small. I've always been kind of big for my age, and that's been fine. So I got to school, didn't really have much trouble. 
um, but then really got teased, was really being picked on, bullied, and um, led to me lashing out. And because I lashed out, I got suspended from school, and the teachers kept telling me, you're on your last legs, you're on your last chance, don't screw up. And because people knew this, they were like, ooh, we can prod the bear now, we can poke mm -hmm. the bear. So that's what they did. Most of my school years after that, going up until GCSEs, were people really being cruel because they knew I couldn't respond or react, whereas I used to have this thing of, I can keep to myself because no one's ever going to have to, no one's going to want to talk to me anyway. Now I didn't have that. People were like, oh, we can prod, poke. And that led to me, my, my mental health really deteriorating. And um, there were days I felt like killing myself. I, I had the note primed in my head. Um, I, I knew how I would do it. I was always too much of a wimp to ever want to follow it through, but I knew how I'd do it. I thought it over and over again. This is how I'm going to do it. And um, things that used to bring me joy, rugby, sport, music, they weren't the same. I wanted to sleep every single hour of the day. And I went to counselling. I mean, they gave me some really good tips. But I wouldn't have called my, myself a Christian at this point. So the tips were, essentially, it comes back to finding truth. Being able to find truth and pin your hope on something you know to be true. And then reshaping your world from that point of truth. The issue is, when you're, the truth you're being told to pin your hope on are stuff like, I'm a good person, or the world is a good place. Well, when I'm not a good person, when I lie, or when I cheat, or when I screw up, or when the world's not a good place, someone gets beaten up, we go into a COVID pandemic, my GCSE grades are my mocks, which I really didn't do that well on, my entire world unravels. And then I have to build myself up again. And I have to keep lying to myself to keep building myself up. Okay. Mm. Tough, tough times. Mm. Did that change? What was the... You said that was when you were 14. Mm. By 22, were you a Christian? Would you have said you were a Christian then? So, yeah. It kind of leads on to the second example. Okay. Um, had another... My second major struggle, which I alluded to, happened a couple of years ago while I was at Bible college. So I'd say really strong in my faith at this point. Became a Christian, kind of sort of really committed to Christ when I was about 18. Mm -hmm. um, didn't mean I was devoid of any struggles, but didn't have anything major. And then kind of a couple of years ago in college, um, had an assignment or two that were just really big, really daunting. And was really struggling with the amount of kind of uh, placement work I had to do. I had, I reckon I was doing somewhere between... 12 to 14 extra hours of work. So really stressed out, a lot of pressure, really struggling. And it just came to kind of one of these moments where someone came up to me and said, are you okay? And it was that weird moment in your head. You go, I really want to say no. Yeah. I'm rubbish. Mm -hmm. I feel worthless, tired all the time. Nothing's bringing me joy. But I just kept on chugging, kept on chugging because sometimes Christians can be bad at this too the church can tell you sometimes to just keep chugging, keep yeah. chugging. Keep reading your Bible, keep yeah. praying, because ultimately that's what's going to get you through. And then eventually got to a point where a really good friend of mine had to sit me down and say, you're not all right. It's okay that you're not all right, yeah. but you're not all right. And the difference this time was when I came to rebuilding my world with the truths, that, uh, this tactic of rebuilding your world with truth going back to truth and starting from there. The difference was that this time, instead of starting with, I'm a good person mm -hmm. and the world is a good place, I started with, God is a good and gracious God. He is worthy of my worship, praise and adoration. And if I can worship and praise and adore him and give everything I've got to him, not because I should, not because it'll earn me anything, but because I want to, because I love God, then that's how my world gets rebuilt. That's how I can start living life again and start loving things again is by loving the one from whom all love comes from. So, you would say you definitely d dealt with it or were able to, things definitely changed when you became a Christian. Mm. That, what would you say then, there's a verse in the Bible, let me just read this, this is from Philippians, and it's chapter 4, mm. and it's verses 6 and 7, and it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Which is lovely, you know, mm. that, that's a really um, encouraging verse. And it seems very clear in verse 6, do not be anxious, mm. not try not to be, do not be anxious mm. about anything. Um, what does that mean then in terms of, because I would definitely say there's times when I, you know, feel anxious about certain things. Can you be a Christian then and still have struggles yeah. with your mental health? And so this is where we've got to be really, really careful because someone can be really struggling and we can think as a loving Christian, I'll open the Bible with this person, uh, Bible app, what's a really good uh, passage on anxiety? Oh, Philippians 4, great, do not be anxious. And we can show this to someone who's really struggling and I'll tell you what, I've been one of these people if you give this verse to someone who's struggling, they will go, oh no, I'm really bad. Mm -hmm. I must be in a really awful place because I can't stop being anxious. So here's the dirty truth. Um, being anxious isn't good. The, the, like, the fact that the Bible tells us not to be anxious shows us the fact that being anxious is not good. It's not pleasant. Mm -hmm. It's not being anxious comes from this world that is broken. Um, but being anxious also shows us our flaws. Yeah. So when I'm anxious, n nine times out of ten, it's because something's not in my control. Okay. Because there's something I'm not able to, to have total control over, or at least some margin of control over. So when I get really anxious, it helps me show my idols. So I can then say, ah, oh, I've got a massive idol of being liked by people. Mm -hmm. Or, ah, I've got a massive idol over this youth group I've got to run. And I really just need to give them to God and give him the praise mm -hmm. and the glory and the worship. But there's also that other one time. Um, and I have a friend who really, really loves people. And if you ever were to be struggling, if you're friends with this person, and you were struggling and having a really, really hard time, this would really, really wind her up. Okay. Now, would you say that that's unbiblical? I hope not. No. no. So there's a word. Love pops up in the Bible with a whole load of different words, and there's one word called splatch in a mind, which is this kind of gut punch love. Okay. This love that you feel for someone so deeply that it hurts. Like when you, when when I'm struggling or when you're struggling, the people around us can't love us so much they just. They have to feel it with us. Yeah. They have to go with it through us. They have to walk with us. So th this person I'm thinking about in particular, I told her I was uh, really struggling with work and she started crying mm. and she got really anxious and upset. And I was like, what? surely this is bad. Well, no. The Bible tells us this is not only something that, we're, that happens, but it's something that's good. We are supposed to love people so strongly, so deeply, that we feel pain and struggle with them. So let, let's get our definitions of anxiety right. Because inward self-analyzing anxiety is bad. Mm -hmm. We will struggle with it. We can struggle with it. But ultimately, uh, it unveils our idols. And we need to combat it and start to build our world up again. But anxiety that shows a love for other people, yeah. a love for God's word, that's... That's us miscommunicating. That's us getting the words wrong. Okay. And we're allowed to love things that much. Yeah. That's really helpful. That is really helpful. Following on from that then, so how can we be a Christian then and mm. struggle with our mental mm. health? How can we do, yeah. do that? So the thing with mental health struggles, the deal with anxiety and depression, is that you instantly become really insular. You go, it's all about me, it's all about what I'm feeling. And you start to self-obsess. It's, it's a roller coaster. And just to say, though, that this, is, this surely definitely won't be everyone's experience, but the, the general experience is when you're depressed and when you're anxious, it's all about yourself. And you're wrapped up in your own cage of emotions, your own cage of feelings. Um, and there doesn't seem to really be a way out um, unless you're one of the, the few that are going through a horrid time of contemplating suicide. Death seems to be the only way out. Um, this isn't true. It's definitely not true. If this is you and this is something you're struggling with, let me tell you now that we are here for you. We want to love you. 
And if this is something you're struggling with, please tell us or please tell people around you or please tell people you love. Um, but ultimately, dealing and struggling with your mental health is insular. It is focused on yourself. And the issue is, the Bible tells us, we aren't inherently good people. We are bad, sinful, flawed people. So when we're looking in and we're looking down at ourselves, all we can see is flaw. Because that's all there is when we're just looking at ourselves. So the trick is, as I say, to build yourself on truth, to look up and see Christ, yeah. see the light, see the cross. And the thing is, looking down leads to pain. Mm -hmm. Because all you can see is brokenness, all you can see is flaw, all you can see is worry and bitterness and anxiety. But when you look up, that leads to joy. Joy doesn't mean happiness. Joy means proper perspective. Joy means knowing where everything goes. Joy means contentment even with struggle. And over, it, this, unless you're spectacularly faithful, you're, you're, you're the 0 0.0001%. Just by looking to Christ won't change your circumstances. But looking to Christ will give you the right perspective. Yeah. It will reveal to you the way forward. It will be the light in the darkness. And the issue is, I think it's worship. So we have a wrong view of worship. So when we see this light, when we look up and see God, kind of, there are people around us that say, okay, your next step should be worship and adoration and love for Christ. So when we go to church, when we enjoy time with other Christians, there seems to be kind of this unwritten rule that worship can be anything, um, but like you really have to focus in on it, make sure you do it, and kind of fill a quota. Okay. So, um, like, if you give God 80% of what you're doing, all you've got to do is look after the 20%, and that can be your worship, that can be what gets you over the hump. This is just so bad. This is such wrong thinking. Because ultimately... If, we, if we're to start at 0%, if it's up to us, our sinful nature will want us to go backward. Our sinful nature will drive us backwards into the minus percent. We're, 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 followers of, of Christ are lucky and blessed to even be able to start at 0%. God is in control of everything. God is orchestrating everything by his power and his grace and his mercy. We are lucky to be at 0%. God has everything in control. Which is to say that, where does worship fit in? Well, that's all we've got to do. In terms of, when I see God and see how amazing he is, all I've got to do is react and respond. The Bible's really great because it tells us how to react and respond. It says, hey, you love me. Here's how you love me. You love Jesus. This is how you love Jesus. You, 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 you work really hard. Not because it serves you, but because it serves the Lord. You pray really hard, not because it serves you, because it serves the Lord. You sing and dance and have joy and trust and struggle and grit and grind it out, not because it brings you anything, but because it serves the Lord and it is worship to the Lord. And it comes back to this quota thing. We're trying to fill a quota. Well, no. Our question shouldn't be how much should we do. It should be when are we going to take a break from stopping? Like we should never ever want to stop worshipping and praising the Lord. Our lives, in Romans 12, said we should offer our lives as a sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So that, that's not part of our lives. That's not 40% of our lives. It's not 10% of our lives. The moment we give everything to God and say, every single thing I do, every single breath I take is for you, that's just such a weight lifted off our chest. Yeah. It's... It's this relief that even when I'm struggling with my anxiety, even when I'm struggling with my depression, I can say, actually, I've got it wrong. I'm trying to take on this 10, 20, 50%. Actually, I just need to let it go. Give it to God and start worshipping instead of doing. Gosh. That's awesome. Mm. What about for the people, because not all of us will have, you know, big... Mm. mental health struggles or even have any problems really with mental health and it's normal I guess for a lot of people never to feel some of the ways that you've described mm. 
But how can those people who never really struggle in that way, how can they be a good friend, would you say, to people who do struggle with their mental health? What advice would you give people trying to support others? Mm. So this is where it gets really interesting. So all of us will have some kind of really upsetting point in our lives. Yeah. People in our lives that we love are going to die. People that we love are going to experience pain. We ourselves will experience grief and struggles. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to deal with anxiety or depression. So it's, it's important to say that from the outset, that depression and anxiety are different from feeling bad or feeling low, which isn't to undermine those struggles. It's just to say that they're different things. Yeah. But that's really good news because on some level, all of us can understand feeling really low. The issue is that someone who hasn't experienced depression will know what feeling low is, but won't know what feeling depressed is. So there's empathy, but it doesn't go all the way. So it's important to say that first. But to answer your question, to open it up, how to be a good friend. So the, 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 the passage I come to is Corinthians 12, 26. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 26, which says, essentially, mourn with those who mourn, weep with those who weep. And it's kind of coming back to this splash in on my love, this gut punch love where you walk with people, you get alongside people. Um, I sent you a story of Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, it's a really, really good story. If it, it was on Facebook a couple of years ago, and it's this story, uh, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet go to see Eeyore, and his stick house is, in, uh, is a shambles, absolute state. And he's just sitting there lonely, and they say, Piglet, we were looking for you. Uh, sorry, Eeyore, we've been looking for you. Where you been? He goes, well... I've been feeling rubbish, down in the dopes, uh, and didn't really feel like anyone wanted to, to be with me. So what do we need the Pooh and Piglet do? They just sit down with him. They be with him. They're his friends. So, of course, they're not going to go anywhere because we care for you. We love you. We're just going to be here with you and ride it out. And when I think of the people who have been most instrumental in kind of my walking depression and anxiety, they're the guys who have gone, just come over for tea. Just come over for, for a cup of tea. Or come over and chill out and we'll just watch TV. Yeah. And we'll just sit and be together and have fellowship and chill out. And that is really hard at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. It's really, really hard at the moment to go around to someone's house and have a cup of tea. Um, and I wondered, like, have you got any tips? Have you got any ideas of things we can be doing to help friends out? Well, I was thinking just from what you said, how there's a danger sometimes of trying to fix people's problems mm. and trying to... You feel nervous of asking because mm. you think, I've not got a solution. And actually, what you've just said is really helpful. That we don't have to have a solution for somebody who might say, no, mm. I'm not fine. Yeah. And us feel nervous. Because I think that's probably one of the reasons why sometimes people are nervous to ask questions because they might not have the answers. Mm. Um, I think text messages are sometimes really good. Some people don't like answering the phone mm. and chat, chat, chat in. Some people really just like... A text message thinking of you how's your monday going just a kind mm. of simple one um or a walk with, with you still mm. are we yeah we're allowed to do yeah, that what, to do one person still. you're allowed to have mm. a recreational walk or exercise with somebody and like you've said the sitting and watching tv which is often a nicer thing than going on a run maybe mm. um but or i think walk. Or walk, <laughs> yeah <laughs> whichever floats your boat but um I think maybe just, yeah, walking alongside mm. somebody and not necessarily talking about the issue, but just being there yeah. with that person, perhaps. Mm. Um, I had a buddy, uh, I, I had a little bit of a wobble this week, came around and gave me some, uh, something to drink and, uh, and uh, some ice cream. Really, really good buddy of mine. Nice, yeah, that's um, a good buddy, that. Oh, very good buddy. Yeah. Um, I think that, that works as well. That's something we can do as well, just leaving someone care, a yeah. care package yeah. on the doorstep. yeah. I think ultimately, though, it's like showing you love someone, yeah. showing you care for someone. Yeah. And like in these times especially, it can be really tricky yeah. because we can't see each other. We can't yeah. go into people's homes. But like just sign that I'm here. Yeah. I'm still for you. I'm still yeah. with you. Willing to walk through. The moment we can get out and do this properly, we will. But like for now, all I can do is give you some Diet Dr. Pepper and a thing of ice cream. Yeah. But in the future... We're going to go 
watch a movie yeah. or sit out and chill, sit yeah. somewhere and chill out. Yeah. And I think ultimately it, it points to the future. It points to a point where we say this will get better. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that people might question then, based on what you've mm. shared, and I know when I was a new Christian, mm. I think I used to have these, this kind of scale of someone's a really, really good Christian when you can do this, this and this, and you've been to Spring Harvest, and, mm. you've done, and you're not really a very good Christian if you've only been to mm. church twice, you know, <laughs> which is silly, obviously. But what would you say then when people would say, um, are Christians that struggle with their mental health then? less of a Christian than those who don't? Mm. I think part of that is based in the Philippians passage, isn't okay. it? Okay. That Philippians passage that says, like, don't be anxious. We can kind of come from that and say, well, I am anxious. So am I less Christian? What's going on, God? And this is the thing. We can try and make the Christian faith this massive grey area, like, or a scale, like I'm plus five today and other people are minus three in reality it's you're in or you're out yeah. do you trust jesus that jesus has saved you from your sin or do you not and there might there might be really really days be, might be days because of your anxiety and your depression you go oh, it's really tough to trust in this yeah there might be days later on when you feel like a plus 10 christian mm -hmm. because it's just the best day ever and you can praise the lord the issue is that's a really broken way of thinking. Well, because it puts the perspective onto you. you it's almost, you mm. can start to take the glory a little bit of, I'm a really good critic because I'm finding this really easy and mm. I can worship. Mm. I think it puts the, uh, the focus on you rather than God. Would you say that? Exactly. It's doing what, it, it, it's doing what we said earlier, what I said earlier in terms of when you look inwards and you look at yourself, the anxious person, the depressed person sees their flaws, sees their shame, sees their rubbishness. But actually, there's something different happening for the, someone who's really happy and joyful and having a great time. They look at themselves and they mistake their flaws for, for strengths. Mm -hmm. They look at themselves and see pride and strength where there is none. And that's part of that because the Lord has blessed them with some time in the light and some time having a good time. But it's all the same thing. It all leads to destruction and ruin and shame and just being in a really dark place so coming back to the question um am i more or less of a christian because i struggle well are you more or less of a christian because you're having a really good time is is, is the question to flip it on its head yeah and the answer unequivocally is no no of course well mm. it made it just made me think because it's not a question of how, it's almost like how good are we, it's how mm. good is God yeah, yeah. that he would, yeah, that he would see us all as his children. Yeah. That it's like, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's coming back to, if you were watching the gospel series we did, that clothesline that yeah. Ian did. Yeah. Like we all want to grade ourselves and say yeah. we're this, that and the other. We're actually we're all, all the way down at this rubbish end, but God pays, Jesus pays the price for us on yeah. the cross so um, that we're all in. Yeah. Okay. Just lastly then, mm. because I don't know, I can't say that we've discussed this massively. What, why is it that you think we don't massively discuss the topic of mental health? I mean, I touched on a little mm. bit of sometimes you can feel you don't know enough, you don't understand enough mm. of the depth of people's mental health struggles, mm. or that you're nervous kind of, we don't discuss it because maybe we're nervous of saying the wrong thing. Yeah. Is there a danger then in that if we don't discuss things? Mm. So I think you're right. There is definitely a danger because we're called to love people. Yeah. Especially we're a church family. And that, that word, oh, that's a different conversation. But like we're not a church group of people. We're not a church bunch of friends. We're a church family. We're called to have the same ties of love, the same bonds of love that tie together a family, not just good friends not just acquaintances, but a family. And it comes back to, again, this splash in my love, this gut punch love that says, I am going to walk with you and bear with you and struggle with you. And that's really hard in, well, presuming we can get back in church one day. When you're leaving church, I see you, Helen, I go, hey, Helen, how are you doing? You go, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, great. I'm not too bad either. Yeah. Where actually, you could be feeling really, really rubbish. Yeah. 
Or I could be feeling really, really rubbish. But we stand on, I wonder if it's Britishness. I'm, little, I'm fine, yeah. Mm, this Britishness that goes, yeah, I'm all right, even though my heart could be breaking 20 different ways. But because of circumstance or because of awkwardness, I'm not willing to open up. So I think that's part of it, is that the depressed person, the anxious person, we need to take that, take that first step, yeah. however small it is, and address the issue. Yeah. Um, but that, that's really hard. Yeah. So, like, have you got any ideas how we, how we can talk about this more as a church? I guess it just is trying to build. That's what's highlighted, I think, to my family is the inability to keep up a relationship mm. as well as you would when you can see people in person and kind of a little bit of a conviction of going deeper with relationships as in mm. investing in people and actually going that extra mile. And it's hard when like, life is busy. You know, I find my life's really busy sometimes, but it's not too busy that I can't mm. invest in people and actually check up on those people. And I think it's just that conviction of, I think there's, there's definitely people that you click with a little bit more. I'm not saying it's mm. cliquey, but I'm thinking those people that you are good friends with, just asking them that question or living life so that you can learn when they're feeling really happy and when they're not feeling great mm. and what they struggle with and how's work and how's family and just living life with those people that you can check in on mm. and provide support. Yeah. I guess it's a challenge, really, mm. and a challenge to think, how can I be doing that now? Because it doesn't mean we don't, can't be doing that, but just mm. being creative, I guess, of thinking of other ways or providing, you, mm. know, a, you know, even just a note to people um, just to, yeah, feel, people feel happy that the, they can talk about things, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah. Would you say that part of it is feeling as though you've got permission? I guess so. I think sometimes you, you don't want to pry either in people's mm. lives and even when you've got a good relationship, sometimes there can be the tendency to think, well, if they really wanted to tell me, they'd come out and say it. Yeah. So therefore, I don't want to say. Whereas I'd be sat there, please, please ask please me how ask I'm doing. Me. Please, yeah. please, please ask yeah. me how I'm actually doing. Yeah. Really, really, I'm, I'm ready. I'm yeah. waiting. I've got an hour's worth of stuff I want to chat to you about. If yeah. you just would ask me, yeah. no, James, how are you really doing? And that would be coming from kind of the depressed and anxious perspective. That's one really, really helpful thing in terms of the people that have loved me best have been the ones that have said, no, we're not going to do with the bog standard answers. Yeah. When, when I ask you, how are you doing? And I look down, look away and go, yeah, I'm not too bad. Yeah. They go, no, no, how, how, yeah. how are you actually doing? Yeah. Tell me, I want to hear how your week's been, all the things you've really struggled with. Um, and I really actually want to have a conversation. Yeah. And actually, sometimes you can go, yeah. No, you know what, actually, I'm not too bad. But other times, that, that push to be, no, I'm giving you permission, tell me how you actually feel, is all it takes. Yeah. So actually, it's better to ask that question, even though you think it could be awkward. Mm. It's always better to make the conversation or ask mm. the question rather than just say nothing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really important point, that really. Mm. And I think that's for all ages as well. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we're getting a little bit close mm. on time. Should we, should we pray? Should we pray now, and then Lord yeah. is going to come and yeah, lead yeah. us? So, should we pray? Mm. Yeah. Father God, this uh, stuff we're looking at will affect so many of us in different ways, especially because of this lockdown, this new lockdown. Uh, I pray for all of us who are struggling with our mental health. Pray for those in particular who have depression and have anxiety. I pray, Lord, that you'd be with us that have it, that you'd strengthen us, lift our eyes from ourselves to you, but also you'd be with our friends and our family around us. It can be really hard to be those guys that just don't know what to do. I pray, Lord, that you give them the wisdom and the strength to ask really uncomfortable questions, Lord, to ask questions that take us out of our comfort zone. Um, that ultimately will just do us the world of good. Pray that you'd give us the boldness and the courage to do that, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, do you want to come up and lead us? Yeah. Heavenly Father, 
We come to you tonight thankful that you are always with us. We come to you with areas of our lives that are difficult and seem without hope. In the Bible, there are lots of examples of people who struggled with their state of mind, and we can see that they found comfort in you. The words of Psalm 40 show how real times of darkness and sadness can feel. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Thank you that these words show how God was with David in his desperation. We pray that all those who are struggling with poor mental health will have a full vision of how much God loves them and how precious they are to him. We ask this especially for those who still feel in the slimy pit and have no sense of the new song that God has for them. We ask that they may be drawn to him each morning and ground, him, ground themselves in his care. Make the church community a place where we can be honest about how we feel. Please help us to reach out to listen to and care for those who are finding times tough. We are also thankful for seasons of life that are full of happiness and contentment. Help us to recognise these moments and to express our gratitude to you. We ask that when we are blessed with good mental and emotional health, we would be extra mindful of ways in which we can support others. We praise you, Lord, for the massive freedoms of faith and worship that we enjoy in this country. Thank you that we are able to declare our faith openly and meet together without fear of persecution. We acknowledge and repent of all the times we have taken this for granted. We pray for all our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world on this persecuted church Sunday. Give them strength to endure and a complete assurance of a beautiful eternity with you. As we reflect on the changes to the social and political landscape in this country, we pray that our freedoms will not be eroded further than they already have been. We ask that our society will maintain a place for Bible-believing Christians to live according to their beliefs, and that the ideal of free speech will truly apply to all with all their perspectives. Lord, we commit these prayers to you and ask all these things in your name. Amen. Well, that's it. That's the end of our 6 p.m. service. Mm -hmm. We're finishing, I think, just about on time. Just that about looks on good. time. Um, it's been great if you've been able to join us this mm. evening, um, and we look forward to seeing you next week. If, just to summarise, James, if people are to take away a couple of things, mm. what would you say the most important? If someone's been struck by something, if someone mm. they need to support, or it's highlighted something within themselves, what would we say for the final mm. thought? So I think if this is you, if what we've been talking about tonight, um, you, you, you've essentially looked in the mirror, you've looked in the mirror and you say, that's me. Um, it's going to be really hard, but please step out and talk about it. Please step out and talk to friends, family, um, and if necessary, go, go and seek the NHS help, help from the NHS. Um, it's not weak, it's not shameful, but most importantly, from our perspective, it's not sinful yeah. to look for help. It's mm -hmm. not sinful. It's not unbiblical to struggle, struggle. And it's definitely not unbiblical or sinful to go and look for help. So if that's you, please, please, please uh, go and look for help. If you want us to help, if you want us to provide that link, uh, my email is james.johnson at cheadle.org.uk. Um, alternatively, you can look for the church's email address or the church's phone number. We would be absolutely delighted to help you if this is you in any way shape or form and i guess just the last reminder for each of us is to mm. be having those conversations mm. to go deeper in our relationships and to take the time to check in yeah. with people i think that would be the lasting thing mm. well it's been great to have you that's the end of our service hopefully we'll see you next week good night bye guys